How to lay solid wood flooring. Here we'll show you how to lay tongue and groove solid wood flooring that's secured with adhesive onto a concrete subfloor, as well as how to fit around obstacles and how to add finishing touches such as flooring trim and threshold bars. Bear in mind that different subfloors or board designs may have different fitting requirements, so be sure to check the manufacturer's instructions. You'll find a full list of tools and materials you'll need at the end of this video. Thorough preparation is key to achieving a professional finish, so see our online guide or leaflet for advice on planning and preparation and aftercare. Solid wood flooring must always be laid on a level, smooth, clean and dry surface. It's best to check the subfloor for damp using a professional moisture meter. If your subfloor is a porous surface, like concrete, then it's best to prep the floor with surface primer before installation, as this will help the adhesive to bond. However, if you're installing over existing floorboards, it's best to lay a damp-proof membrane to protect the floor from moisture. Solid wood can be fixed to existing boards with secret nails or glue if the surface is properly leveled. Before you start laying your solid wood flooring, lay the unopened packs in the room where they're to be laid for between five and seven days. This will allow them to acclimatize. As solid wood boards can be laid either horizontally or vertically, it's best to dry lay them to see which layout best suits your room. However, bear in mind that solid wood flooring should be laid at a 90 degree angle to any existing boards. Plan your layout to ensure that the final row of boards will be at least 60 millimeters wide. Adjust the width of your first row if need be. Remember to factor in an expansion gap of between 10 to 12 millimeters at each end of the room when working this out. If you'll be fitting the solid wood around a door frame, start by removing the door, then line up an off-cutter floorboard with the architrave and trim with a panel saw. Use a hammer and chisel to remove enough of the bottom of the architrave that the solid wood will fit underneath it. Be sure to leave a 10 to 12 millimeter expansion gap. Starting in the left-hand corner of the longest wall, use a trowel to spread adhesive from the wall to the width of two planks. Lay the first board with the groove side facing the wall. Depending on the length of the board, place one or two 10 to 12 millimeter spacers along the length and one across the width. Introduce the next board at an angle of around 20 to 30 degrees and lower into place. Take great care with the alignment, as it's key that your first row is perfectly straight. Add spacers to maintain an expansion gap between the board and the wall. Continue laying until you can't lay any more full boards, ensuring the line of boards is perfectly straight. To fill the gap at the end of a row, measure the distance between the last full board and the wall spacer. Flip a board end over end so it's upside down, with the groove edge still facing you but the other end now facing the wall spacer. Use a pencil and tri-square to mark a guideline on the underside of the board. Clamp the board into a workbench and cut with a jigsaw or panel saw. Then place the cut board into position to complete the first row. If the offcut is at least 300 millimeters long, use it to start the second row from the same end as you started the first. Otherwise, Start the row with a new board sawn in half. You must ensure that the joints between the boards in adjoining rows are always offset by at least 300 millimeters. Put a spacer into position at the start of the second row, then offer the new board at an angle so the tongue section of the second board fits into the groove of the first board. Then, lower it into position and continue to lay the second row. When laying, be sure to check for a close fit between all boards and to tap or pull them into position using a jemmy bar or tapping block when necessary. Don't use a mallet or hammer directly onto the board as this can cause damage. Once the first two rows are secure and perfectly straight, spread 700 to 900 millimeters of adhesive across the length of the room. Be mindful not to spread more than you can comfortably cover in 30 minutes. 
Use tension straps after every five or six rows to further secure the boards. If you need to cut boards to fit the gap in the final row, measure the gap you need to fill and remember to allow for expansion. Then cut the board to size and lay as normal. Once the floor is laid, leave the adhesive for about two hours before walking on it. However, drying times do vary, so be sure to check the manufacturer's instructions. If you need to fill a gap between the board and the door, measure the distance between the outer edge of the architrave on either side. Then measure the gap between the first row and the door. Mark these measurements onto a board, remembering to factor in a 10 to 12 mm expansion gap at each end. Use a jigsaw or hacksaw to cut a board into two pieces so they reach the required length. This will make it possible to slide the sections into position one by one. Lay the sections up against the architrave and mark where you need to trim the ends so the boards will be able to slide underneath. Then, cut along the guide marks. If you're laying your boards vertically, you'll need to do this to all the boards that meet the architrave. Put the first section into position and push it along so it slides underneath the architrave as far as it can go. Then, place the second piece into position and slide the first section back slightly to ensure that there's an expansion gap at both ends. If you need to cut around a pipe, lay a board to the side of it and using an offcut or tri-square, mark a line onto your board to show where the centre of the pipe will be. Then lay the same board front onto the pipe and mark the centre with a line. Where the two lines intersect is where the centre of the pipe will be positioned but remember to factor in an expansion gap. Clamp the board to a workbench and using a 32mm flat wood bit, carefully drill a hole where the two lines intersect. Use a straight edge to draw a pair of lines from the edges of the hole to the edge of the board, each at a slight angle outwards. Use a jigsaw or hacksaw to cut along these lines, leaving you with a wedge-shaped offcut. Fit the board into position around the radiator pipe, then apply grab adhesive to the contact areas of the offcut to hold in place between the pipe and the wall. Trim the profile with a chisel if need be. Add a pipe surround for a neat finish, securing it with grab adhesive if the manufacturer recommends to do so. If your original skirting covers your expansion gaps, then refit it now. Alternatively, remove all the spacers and measure the length of flooring trim you'll need. Use a mitre box and panel saw to make accurate 45 degree cuts at the ends that will join in the corners. Apply a bead of grab adhesive to the back of the trim that will rest against the skirting board and firmly press into position. If necessary, you can hold the trim in place with panel pins whilst the adhesive dries. Do not fix the trim to the flooring as this will prevent expansion. If you're fitting a threshold bar, be sure to choose one that's appropriate for the flooring you're joining. Carefully measure the width of the door frame, allowing for a 10 to 12 mm expansion gap on both sides. Then cut the threshold bar to size. Some designs will require cutting to shape so that the threshold bar will sit flush to the door frame if need be, carefully mark out notches and then cut with a hacksaw. Secure the threshold bar with either grab adhesive or screws, depending on the manufacturer's instructions. Finally, before you refit the door, it's likely you'll need to slightly trim the bottom to accommodate the height of the threshold, board and any underlay. Here's the list of tools you'll need to lay your solid wood flooring. And here are the materials you'll use. And this is the recommended safety equipment needed.